Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. It's 55 days to go into your GCSE Mavs exam, and today we're going to be looking at some other graphs. So we've looked at the quadratic graphs yesterday, today we're going to be looking at the cubic graph, and we're also going to be looking at the reciprocal graph, the y equals 1 over x graph, we're going to be looking at the shapes of those graphs. So that's what we're going to look at in today's video, so let's get started. Okay, today we're going to be looking at other types of graphs. So we've looked at linear graphs and we've looked at quadratic graphs. So today we're going to be looking at reciprocal graphs and we're also going to be looking at cubic graphs. So here we've got the graph of y equals 4 over x. And that's called a reciprocal graph. And remember whenever we were dividing by fractions, we found the reciprocal of the fraction we were dividing by. So for instance, if we were dividing by 5, we took the reciprocal of that and that was a fifth and we multiplied by the reciprocal. So here we've got 4 over x. So this is called the reciprocal graph whenever the x is on the denominator. So we've got y equals 4 divided by x. And we've got an xy table and we're going going to find the points for this graph. We're going to substitute in the values for x and find the values for y. So we've got 4 divided by x. So if x is equal to 10, you'd have 4 divided by 10, and 4 divided by 10 would be 0 0.4. Next, if x is equal to 8, 4 divided by 8, but 4 divided by 8 would be a half, or 0 0.5. Next, if x is equal to 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1. If x is equal to 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. If x is equal to 1, we've got 4 divided by 1, which would be 4. And finally, if we had 4 divided by a half, well, how many halves are there in 4? There'd be 8 halves in 4, so that'd be 8. So here we've got our points. We've got 10, 0 0.4, 8, 0 0.5, 4, 1, 2, 2, 1, 4, and 0.58. So let's plot them. So 0.58 would be there. 1, 4 would be here. 2, 2 would be here. 4, 1 would be there. 8, 0 0.5 would be there and 10, 0.4 would be there. So we've plotted our points, now we're just gonna draw a nice curve through them. So it looks something like this. Now this is a wee bit tricky because I'm trying to do this on the computer, but hopefully you can do it a wee bit better than me if you're doing it on paper. So it looks something like that. So a nice curve that goes through those points. Now you notice it doesn't actually reach the x-axis because no matter what, we're doing four divided by something. So even if it was four divided by a million, there'd still be something. So this graph will approach the x-axis but never reach it. And likewise, whenever we're going up vertically, we can't divide by zero, but we can divide by all the values approaching zero. So the graph will just keep going up and up and up and up and up, but it'll never reach the y-axis. So the x-axis and y-axis is what we call asymptotes, the graph will never reach them. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. So the next graph we're going to draw is y equals 2 over x. And this time I've included the points to the left of the y-axis. So I've got the whenever x values are equal to negatives. So let's have a look at our xy table. We've got 2 divided by x. So 2 divided by 5 would be 0.4. 2 divided by 2 would be equal to 1. 2 divided by 1 would be equal to 2. 2 divided by 0.5. Well, how many halves go into 2? That'll be 4. Okay, now we've got negative values of x. Now remember, a positive divided by a negative would be a negative. So 2 divided by negative 2, well, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 2 divided by negative 2 would be equal to negative 1. 2 divided by negative 1, well, positive divided by negative is a negative, so these are all going to be negative. 2 divided by negative 1 would be negative 2. 2 divided by negative 0 0.5 would be negative 4. And 2 divided by negative 5 would be negative 0 0.4. So we've got our points, now let's plot them. So 5, 0 0.4 would be here. 2, 1 would be here, 1, 2 would be here, and 0 0.54 would be here. So we've got these points, in it. and then if we draw a curve through them, and again, I'm trying to do this on the computer, so it's not the best, but that's my curve, or roughly what my curve would look like. Um, I would think this bit should be a wee bit better, but that would be my curve. And as you can see, it approaches the x-axis, and approaches the y-axis, but never reaches them. So that's our curve there. Now let's have a look at these points, the ones whenever the x-values are negative. So negative 0 0.5, negative 4 would be here. Negative 1, negative 2, well, negative 1, negative 2 would be there. Negative 2, negative 1 would be there. And negative 5, negative 0.4 would be here. And now let's do our curve. There we go. And it's a wee bit better than that one. But as you can see, it looks similar to what's in this quadrant. So it's a curve that never reaches the y-axis or the x-axis. But obviously, because we're dividing 2 by negative values, we get negative answers. So it's down here. And that's what our reciprocal graph looks like. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've been asked to sketch the graph of y equals 1 over x, the reciprocal graph. So we've drawn them, and it looks something like this. Now we've been asked to sketch it. Now it would have the same shape. The only thing that would be slightly different would be, obviously we were doing here 2 divided by these numbers. Well, if we were doing 1 divided by these numbers, they'd be a bit closer to the x-axis, a bit further down. Uh, but in terms of a sketch, we haven't labeled the x and y-axis here in terms of the numbers, so we're just sketching it. So it would look something like this. So that's our sketch of the graph of y equals 1 over x, or the reciprocal graph. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So this time we've been asked to circle the coordinates of the point that lies on the graph of y equals 6 over x. So we've got this reciprocal graph, y equals 6 over x, and we've been asked to circle the point that lies on this graph. 
Now remember with these coordinates, we've got our x coordinate and our y coordinate. Remember our first bit's along the corridor and our second number's up the stairs. So the first number is the x and the second number is the y. So if we substitute these values into our equation of the graph, then we'll see which one lies on it, which one works. So if we take our y equals 6 over x, if we substitute in these x values, which one of them will give us the right y value? So if x is equal to 6, we would have y equals 6 over 6, and 6 divided by 6 is 1, so y would be equal to 1. So whenever x is equal to 6, y would be equal to 1, not 0. So this coordinate does not lie on the graph. Okay, next, whenever x is equal to negative 1, so if x is equal to negative 1, we're going to substitute this negative 1 into here, or into here, so we'd have y equals 6 divided by negative 1. 6 divided by negative 1, well, positive divided by negative is a negative, so y is going to be equal to negative, and 6 divided by 1 is 6, is going to be negative 6, so it'll be negative 1, negative 6, not negative 1, 6, so that point doesn't lie on the graph either. Okay, 6, 1, let's have a look, so if x is equal to 6, we would have y equals, we've got 6 divided by whatever x is, so 6 divided by 6, and 6 divided by 6 is 1, so y is equal to 1, so if x is equal to 6, y is equal to 1, and that's what we've got here. So this point would work, so we've been asked to circle it, we'll circle that one. And let's just check this one. And finally, if we had this one, we've got x equal to 0. And so if x equal to 0, we'd substitute 0 into here, so we get y equals 6 over 0, and 6 divided by 0, but well, we can't divide by 0. So that one would work, and try it on your calculator. If you do 6 divided by 0, you get a math error. And also thinking about it, whenever x equal to 0, that'd be where it crosses the uh, y-axis, because obviously it's 0 along the corridor, so it'd be where it crosses the y-axis. And remember, with these reciprocal graphs, none of them have any points on the y-axis. So the point 0, 6 wouldn't lie on that graph. So the answer was 6, 1, because if we substitute in the value for 6, we'd have 6 divided by 6, which is 1, and that works. Okay, now let's have a look at our next type of graph. So our next type of graph is the cubic graph. So if we looked at linear graphs, that's graphs, for instance, in the form y equals 4x plus 1, where it's just an x term. We've looked at quadratic graphs, where, for instance, you've got y equals x squared plus 4x plus 7. That would be a quadratic graph because it's got the x squared term. If it's got an x cubed term as the highest power, it's then called a cubic graph. So here we've got y equals x cubed. So let's draw the graph of y equals x cubed and see what it looks like. So to find the y value, we're going to cube all the x values. So we're going to cube these values in this xy table. So 2 cubed, that'll be 2 times 2 times 2, and 2 times 2 is equal to 4, times 2 is equal to 8. So 2 cubed is equal to 8. Okay, next, 1 cubed. Well, 1 cubed would be equal to 1, because 1 times 1 times 1 is equal to 1, so that's equal to 1. 0 cubed, well, 0 cubed is equal to 0, because 0 times 0 times 0 is obviously 0. Okay, negative 1. So we need to be careful with these negatives. So negative 1 cubed. So whenever we cube something, we multiply by itself and by itself again. So, that, so we're going to multiply negative 1 by itself and by itself again. So, so let's have a look. So we've got negative 1 multiplied by negative 1. Well, negative times a negative is a positive, so negative 1 times negative 1 will be 1. And then we're going to times that by negative 1. Well, 1 times negative 1, well, positive times a negative is a negative. So that's to be negative 1, because negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, times negative 1 will be negative 1. So that would be equal to negative 1. Okay, next, negative 2, so negative 2 cubed, so that would be equal to negative 2, multiplied by negative 2, multiplied by, multiplied by negative 2, let's see what we get. So negative 2 times negative 2, that would be equal to 4, because a negative times a negative is a positive, so negative 2 times a negative 2 is equal to 4, and then 4 times negative 2 would be equal to negative 8, so that would be equal to negative 8. And finally, negative 3 cubed, well, negative 3 cubed, well, negative times a negative times a negative is a negative, and 3 times 3 is equal to 9, times 3 would be 27, so it's going to be negative 27. So we've got our points, so let's plot them. So we've got 2, 8, so 2, 8 would be up here somewhere. We've then got 1, 1, so the point 1, 1 would be there somewhere. 0, 0, the origin, would be there. Negative 1, negative 1 would be there somewhere. Next one, negative 2, negative 8, so negative 2, negative 8 would be there. And negative 3, negative 27 would be way down there somewhere. And it just goes to show you how steep this graph will get. It would just go down really quickly, because obviously you're cubing. So the next one would then would be negative 64 and so on. So the graph would look something like this. And that would be the graph of y equals x cubed. And that's it. And if it was y equals negative x cubed, it would look the same but the other way around. So that's what that cubic graph would look like, y equals x cubed. Okay, so we've had a look at this cubic graph. We've had a look at the reciprocal graph. Now let's have a look at a question for you to try yourself. Here we've got four graphs, graph A, graph B, graph C, and graph D. And we've got three equations. And we've been asked to identify which graph is which equation. So we've got y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, and we've got y equals 1 over x. So have pause the video now and try this question. 
Okay, so the first one is y equals x squared, or the quadratic graph. And remember, if it's a positive quadratic, so in this case it's just x squared, it would be a u-shaped parabola. So if we have a look at our graphs, so our u-shaped parabola will be this one, this u-shape. So graph A is y equals x squared. If it's y equals minus x squared, it would be an n-shaped parabola, looking something like that. But because it's x squared, it's a u-shaped parabola. Okay, next we've got y equals x cubed. So the graph of y equals x cubed, well, it's going to be this one. Because obviously 0 cubed is 0, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27. It gets very steep very quickly. And if we cube negative numbers, so negative 1 cubed is negative 1, negative 2 cubed is negative 8, and so on. So the graph, so graph D is y equals x cubed. And that's it. We've done graph A, we've done graph D, so we've got two choices left for our last one. So finally, we've got y equals 1 over x. So let's have a look at our graphs. So we're looking for the reciprocal graph. And remember the shape of the reciprocal graph. It's quite unique in terms of what it looks like. As you can see, it's graph C. So it's graph C because, obviously, whenever x equal to 0, well, 1 divided by 0, we can't do. So it won't ever touch the y-axis. So actually, you can rule that one out straight away. And then in terms of dividing by a very small positive number, such as 0 0.01 and so on, you're going to get a very large answer. If you divide by 1, if 1 divided by one would be one and then if you divide by a large numbers you get a small decimal number to so be like 0.0, .0 so on so that would be that so that would be that bit of the graph and then in terms of this side if you do divide by negatives a positive divide by a negative is a negative so it'd be down here somewhere so that'd be graph c and if you got those well done and that's it so in this video we've looked at the cubic graphs and the reciprocal graphs so i was going to do the shapes but i'm not sure in terms of the camera which way my hands will be going so is the cubic graphs that way or I suppose that way depending on which way the camera's showing you and likewise with the reciprocal graph so one over x graph is it that way or that way depending on which way it is at y equals one over x graph so in this video we've looked at the shapes of those graphs it's important to know what they look like so if you've got window pens draw them on your windows write down what they are so if you're daydreaming you'll remember the shapes of those graphs if you've got a cheat sheet remember to jot down in your cheat sheet and sort of uh, you know learn them get someone to quiz you what does the go cubic graph look like what uh, the y equals x cubic graph look like what does the graph of y equals 1 over x look like and so on? Because you might need to identify them in the exam where to draw them and so on. So I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And tomorrow there'll be the next video for 54 days. Go to GCC Man's exam. So I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Bye.